Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends to this third and uh, final lecture on state and sovereignty. And today in this lecture we will uh, focus on, on this um, new ways of looking at uh, governance and the power relationship in uh, the process of governance. And there we will focus on uh, Foucault ideas on governmentality and how it relates to the power of the state and modern government. So, we will basically focus on the uh, governmentality and through that we will try to understand the functioning of modern state. And this conceptualization of modern state and its power we will see is very different from uh, say liberal state or Marxist state or the feminist state that we have discussed. And it is uh, a kind of uh, new approach to understanding the functioning of a state and its power of governance or processes of governance. So, this is a very radical uh, approach to the idea of modern state and its power and it also then leads to new theorization of social, political and economic relationships in society. So, many other theorists or social scientists have used or followed these methods of understanding power and the functioning of a state in their theorization of uh, say human relations or men women relations or the bio power and how new governmentality or new liberal governmentality functions and so on. So, uh, it has opened up new ways of looking at or explaining um, the functioning of modern state and politics in uh, modern uh, recent times. So far, we have discussed different conceptions of a state, where a state is by and large uh, defined as a kind of uh, monopoly over legitimate means of violence. So, the broader understanding of uh, a state is uh, that it is an institution which controls power, which is an institution where power is concentrated and which then uses that power which is legitimate power and the authority. Um, and uh, it is seen as uh, that a state as an institution yields certain power, exercise certain power because it has the monopoly of the legitimate violence. So, that is the conventional broader understanding of modern state as an institution with a monopoly over legitimate uh, means of violence. So, in this definition, we see power as concentrated in the hands of a state and a state is seen as an institution which holds and exercise power in a society and such exercise of power is regarded as the legitimate power. Now, uh, in Foucault, uh, while discussing the concept of power, we have seen that his understanding of power is a kind of radical uh, conceptualization which understand power not as something which is suppressive or concentrated, but it is like all pervasive continuous uh, flow throughout the system. So, uh, the analogy that he makes of power is like uh, bloods in capillary. So, bloods constantly move similarly in the structure of the society or polity power is something which constantly moves. So, its power is more dispersed and not concentrated. And the second power is also productive. So, uh, with this radical conceptualization of power as productive and dispersed rather than concentrated and suppressive 
that is the conventional understanding of power is something some agent some individual some institution having certain power to do something so there is a kind of agency involved uh, in this understanding of power as a kind of concentration which enables some individual or institution to affect the behavior of other individual or other institution Foucauldian understanding of power is a radical conceptualization where power is seen not just concentrated in one institution or um, uh, individual, but it is dispersed throughout the system and it is also not just suppressive, but it also has uh, productive dimension of power. So, some of these debates we have discussed while we discussed this power. So, uh, with this radical conceptualization power, 20th century philosopher Michel Foucault provides an unconventional description of governmental power. So, according to him, the exercise of governmental power in contemporary times is the result of this triangular combination of sovereign power, disciplinary power and governmentality. Now, uh, he is saying uh, that uh, while discussing about uh, the techniques of government or the process of governance, we usually make a mistakes by attaching a chronology that say uh, the governance in a particular historical time was more about the sovereignty of the state, then comes the disciplinary power and finally, now we are living in the era of governmentality which basically we will discuss in details, but which basically means that uh, government controls the subject or the citizens most effectively by not directly or physically interfering with his or her life, but by producing a conditions or creating a condition in which individual or the citizen behaves in a particular way. That is the mode of governmentality which is the latest or the most recent phenomena in terms of uh, uh, the process of governance. So, we often make this distinction that there was a time when there was a sovereign power, then comes disciplinary power and now is the era of governmentality. Foucault argues that this kind of chronological sequencing of uh, governance is not the correct ways of looking at, because what we often see in the society is the combination of all these uh, uh, forms of power, sovereign power, disciplinary power and the governmentality together. So, governmentality here is much broader a term than either state or government. The governmentality is much more about techniques or the modes of governance than the conventional understanding of a state as the sovereign power or the government which exercises uh, the power of the state. Governmentality refers to the conduct of conduct. So, it um, a kind of uh, musical phraseology and not uh, very explicitly explain the functioning of the government in the modern societies and we will discuss how complex such modes of uh, governmentality is, but basically it talks about where government exercises its power by creating a conditions, by producing a conditions in which uh, the subject or the individual may feel free that he or she has the decision or the freedom to make decisions governing um, his or her life. But the structure of governance is such that the choices that individual is going to make is already always preconditioned by the modes of governmentality and so on. So, uh, governmentality which is much broader a term than a state and government is something that refers to the conduct of conduct. So, it creates its conditions or produce the conditions which determines the choices that individual have the decisions that individual may have uh, in a given society. So, it radically altered the way in which we understand power and government. So, this idea of governmentality which is new and which leads to new kind of theorization about power uh, relationship in society is something which radically alter our understanding of um, uh, power and government. And it also influenced a great many thinkers such as uh, Giorgio Agamben. If some of you are interested, you may think about the biopolitics and biopower. We will briefly discuss it in one of our slides today. And Judith Butler, uh, Deleuze, Paul Rovino and many others are influenced by this kind of radical conceptualization of power 
state and government. Now, coming back to this idea of governmentality, uh, its meanings and features, we can see governmentality as a combination of these two terms, government and rationality and how the both are interlinked is something which we will discuss in uh, next one or two slides. But governmentality as a term can be seen as a kind of combination of these uh, techniques or the modes of governance as in government and the tools and techniques of knowledge or surveillance and so on as in uh, the rationality. So, uh, the governmentality in that sense is a combination of these two terms government and rationality. Governmentality emphasizes that governing is an art and to govern effectively it requires knowledge. So, this relationship between knowledge and power we have discussed and how the both is interlinked, how it is not just that the knowledge which empowers or which gives power to uh, the agent, but it is the power structure which determines what kind of knowledge is regarded as authoritative knowledge. So, it is a kind of interlinking. So, governmentality uh, emphasized that governing is an art and to govern effectively it requires knowledge, techniques and various modes and mechanisms of governing. And these modes or and mechanisms and techniques of governing is not just about the rule or the constitution or the authority, but it transcends those conventional limited or narrow a definition of a state and its power. So, he argued that governmentality refers to the conduct or an activity. So, the governmentality refers to the conduct or an activity that mean to shape, guide or affect the conduct of the people. So, the objective of the governmentality is to shape, guide and affect the conduct of the people without directly or physically interfering in their decision making. So, the effectiveness of governmentality is the invisibleness of the direct physical interference in the lives of the citizens. So, citizen may in their individual, personal, private domain feel that they are free to uh, make decisions, but the functions of governmentality create uh, the structure which already always conditions and limits the choices that the individual may have. So, the effectiveness of governmentality is its aim to conduct or act in a manner which shape, guide and affect the conduct of the people. So, conduct does not mean government directing or guiding one's life personally or uh, physically, but it is about uh, direct oneself or self governance which is already conditioned by the uh, government or the functioning of governmentality. So, in the process of governing, governmentality classifies people into various groups to manage or rule them better. So, uh, the uh, techniques or the rationality of uh, the government is to first gather or the collect knowledge about the population or the rule. And once that knowledge is gathered, then classify them into different groups and then accordingly uh, formulate policy so that they can better uh, managed or ruled uh, by the government. So, it classifies the people into various groups using the tools of statistics and methods of surveillance and that enables the uh, modern government to manage its population. right? and uh, rule them better. So, um, uh, in the modern practices of governance, the statistical tools or the rationality or the knowledge or the techniques are as significant as uh, its coercive apparatus and um, modern governmentality uh, tries to functions more effectively without relying on the coercive or the um, brute force of the state. So, uh, in the sovereign power, in the monarchy, in uh, disciplinary power, you have those coercive apparatus uh, using very often by the state. 
but in uh, uh, the phase of governmentality what you see is the condition where citizens or subjects are classified into different groups and accordingly different policies are formulated to manage them better, to rule them better and give them the uh, space where they may assume that they are free to make decisions, but that uh, decision is already always conditioned by the functioning of uh, governance or governmentality. So, modern government according to Foucault is about how to govern oneself, how to be governed, how to govern others, by whom the people will accept to be governed and how to become the best possible governor. So, that is the whole functions of a modern government that is not just about some body which is governing the other, but it is also about governing oneself, how to govern, whom to ac accept as the governor and how to effectively govern. So, these are some of the concerns of modern government and in this uh, broad sense, government is then not just limited to say the idea of rule or legitimacy or state institutions alone. So, the uh, objective of state and the uh, government is then in this broader conception where government is much beyond one agent or the institution ruling the rest of the population, but it also includes the elements of how to govern oneself, by whom one should uh, be willing to be governed and on what basis one should govern others and so on. This broader understanding of government is then not just limited to the idea of rule, legitimacy or state institution, but it also equally applicable to the self, family, workplace or asylum and so on. So, it transcended the conventional boundary of a state and government that talks about basically the rules, uh, the institutions, the idea of legitimacy and so on. Uh, the functioning of a governmentality transcend these conventional realm of government to include self, family, workplace, asylum, prison and so on and so forth. So, in other words for Foucault, governing involves directing the behavior of the body individual and that uh, relates to the idea of subjectivity. How the tools and techniques of government produce newer subjectivities, where uh, individuals are already made uh, subject or docile enough to obey the process of governance or to obey the state without questioning, without much resistance. So, uh, governing involves directing the behavior of the body individual, the body social and the body politic by means other than force or even explicit rules. So, the tools and the techniques of governance by and large is something which is not direct force or direct use of force or the coercive um, apparatus of state such as police, army and so on and also the explicit uh, rule. So, uh, in other words, the functioning of governmentality is seen most effective when there is no visible use of force or imposition of rule and yet the population uh, conduct or behave in a manner which uh, uh, strengthen the legitimacy or the authority of uh, the state and its institution. So, uh, that is the functions of modern governmentality which tries to or aims to produce newer subjectivities, newer individual or what we can also call docile body which is willing to obey the authority or the command of the state and institution. So, the governing actually involves directing the behavior of the body individual, the body social and the body politic by means other than force or even explicit rule. So, whether conducted on oneself by oneself or on a social body by a combination of political, economic and social powers, government operates through and molds the capacity of governed body to regulate its own behavior. So, uh, the idea is that the uh, governing of oneself by the oneself 
or on a social body by a combination of these political, economic and social powers. Government operates through and molds the capacity of governed body, whether it is the individual or the society or the body politic and so on to regulate its own behavior. So, that uh, scope or freedom to govern, to regulate oneself is provided and in this regard paradoxically presupposes a degree of freedom on the part of the governed. So, those who are ruled over or those who are governed may presuppose a degree of freedom in this structure of uh, governmentality where they are provided with the space to regulate their life, to govern themselves. But the way they regulate and govern themselves is already conditioned by the power of governmentality, the techniques of governmentality. So, governmentality as a term Foucault deploy to understand how rationality functions and operates within the structure of governance and also how governance itself is seen as involving rationality. So, the combination of uh, these two words government and rationality is therefore, very significant in understanding governmentality. So, uh, it is the integral part of governance and in fact, governance itself is seen as involving rationality. So, it aims to understand the governance by the combination of institutions, knowledge and disciplinary practices. So, these are the three mechanisms through which uh, governmentality or the process of governance operates or functions in modern societies. So, according to Foucault, governmentality has four key features and these key features of governmentality is one that individual mass national or transnational bodies and their energies, needs, capacities and desires. So, you know to understand any or each one of these, what are the capacities or the desires or the needs of the individual, uh, the group of individual in sense of mass, the national people or the international uh, transnational bodies. To understand their desires, to understand their needs and the capacities requires enormous capacity or uh, the tools and techniques to uh, collect information, use that information for ordering, managing and directing this whole uh, set of peoples starting from the individual to mass to the national to the transnational. So, the first um, feature of governmentality is it tries to acquire the knowledge or gather the knowledge or information about individual mass, national or transnational bodies and their energies, needs and capacities and desires and then order it, manage it and direct it in a particular way. So, the effectiveness of the governmentality lies in the knowledge of uh, the population, uh, use of the uh, statistics and so on to understand their energies, needs, capacities and desires and then accordingly formulate policies to order them, to manage them and to direct them in a particular manner. Second, governmentality has a vast range of points of operation. So, there is no just one sites of government or the practices of governmentality. Governmentally has a vast range of points of operation and application from individual to mass populations and from particular parts of the body and psyche to appetites and ethics, works or citizenship practices. So, for example, uh, the discourse on say health, the medicine, safety in modern uh, liberal government is seen as or perhaps more important than say discourse on rights of the individual against the new liberal state. So, this uh, citizen is also seen as a kind of subject of governmentality or governmental power. So, the second um, feature of governmentality is that it has a vast range or points of operation which includes both which is seen as political and not so political and uh, the significance of such discourses or the sites of power is equally uh, drawn in terms of uh, understanding or explaining the functioning of governmentality. So, from individual to the mass population, from particular parts of the body to the psyche or the appetites and ethics are all included 
in uh, understanding the functioning of governance in modern society. Third, government is something which is far from being restricted to rule, law or other kinds of visible and accountable power. It works through a range of invisible and non-accountable social powers. So, for example, pastoral power. Now, the example of uh, uh, this pastoral power is something to understand how governmentality functions and operates not within the limits or purview of say rule, laws and accountable power or authority, but it operates in multiple ways through a range of invisible or non-accountable social powers. So, for example, uh, the power of the pastoral and Foucault uses it in explaining that how power emanates in one sphere and then migrate to the another sphere and it is as effective and perhaps more effective in other spheres than the sphere in which it emerges or emanates in the uh, first place. So, for example, uh, the pastoral power which migrates from church, so church the pastoral is the authority or the authoritative figure, but it is not limited to the church. The pastoral power emerges or emanated in church, but it also infiltrate or interfere in the sphere of say state, workplace and so on. So, it is not just restricted to the rule, uh, law or other kinds of visible accountable power, but it works through a range of invisible or non-accountable social powers like the pastoral power. So, pastoral power is one such example, but there are multiple examples through which modern governmentality operates, not just through the mechanism of rules, uh, laws and the accountable institution, but also using the existing structural societal uh, power which uh, migrates, uh, which is often invisible and uh, has uh, influence uh, in other spheres of the life of population also. Now, the fourth and that is drawing from the third is that governmentality both employs and infiltrate a number of discourses which is ordinarily conceived as unrelated to the political power, governance or the state. So, uh, governmentality uh, transcend this um, limited understanding of uh, governmental discourse that is merely limited to political power, governance and state. So, when we talk about uh, government or the state, we often refer to those discourses that is particularly related to uh, modern state or governance or the politics. Governmentality often employs or infiltrate those discourses which is in the ordinary sense not seen as something which is related to politics or state or the governance. So, for example, the scientific discourse, you know on the idea of medicine, allopathy or Ayurvedi, homeopathy and so on. Uh, the um, uh, scientific knowledge in uh, comparison to say traditional or conventional knowledge, that scientificity of a knowledge sanctions certain authority to a particular forms of knowledge and this we have discussed in the lecture on power. So, this uh, scientific discourse or the religious discourse which is about um, ethics, morality and other worldly affairs or the popular discourses in, in society. These are the discourses which may in the ordinary sense seen as not related directly to the power of the state or the uh, governance, but governmentality includes these discourses also to understand the functioning of power and the operation of power in a society. So, thus governmentality transcends the conventional boundaries of a state or government, it transcends the conventional boundaries of a state and government and draws upon and this point is very crucial to understand the all inclusive or most comprehensive understanding of uh, governmentality or the governance and yet there is a scope for newer identities or the use of power in the productive manner. So, uh, it transcends this conventional boundaries of state or government and draws upon without unifying, centralizing or rendering systematic or even consistent a range of powers and knowledge dispersed across the modern society. 
So, this is very uh, crucial that it transcends this conventional uh, boundaries of state and government to include a range of power and knowledges that is dispersed across the society, be it medical discourse, political discourse, popular discourse and so on and so forth, but it does not unify them or centralize them. So, there is a kind of uh, disperse or a kind of looseness in terms of the uh, power structure and yet uh, together it constitute uh, the condition where individual is subjected to the most effective power of governmentality and yet paradoxically they may feel that they are free to uh, make decisions governing his or her own life. So, in modern market economy many of you may feel that market gives you enough choice, but also market conditions your choice uh, to have. So, uh, that is just the brute example of how governmentality functions, but it is about creating the conditions or create uh, in other words the phrase that Foucault used conducting the conducts. So, that is about the governmentality. So, uh, the governmentalization thus refers to internal reorganization of a state which connects so, it is about internal reorganization of the state which connects the constitutional, fiscal, organizational and judicial power of the state. So, this is the conventional idea of state and government that is about uh, constitutional, fiscal, organizational and judicial power. With endeavors to manage the economic life, the health, the habits of population, the civility of the masses and so on. So, the governmentalization is about reorganization of the state which uh, connects the limited or the narrow understanding of a state in the sense of constitutional, fiscal, organizational, judicial power to endeavors to manage the economic life or the health or the habits of the population and how they should be disciplined in a particular way. So, this uh, governmentalization or the uh, process of governmentality ensures that state and governance is not just about constitution, rules, authority and so on, but it also endeavor to manage the economic life, uh, the health habits and discipline of uh, population. So, according to Foucault, a state then is more like a composite reality and mythicized abstraction, which fails to explain the modes through which a modern citizen subject, citizen in a sense of docile body right, uh, is produced, positioned, classified, organized and above all mobilized by an array of governing sites and capacity. So, the through governmentality uh, uh, you can better understand how uh, the tools and techniques and the modes of governance. Uh, produced, position, classify, organize or mobilize the modern uh, citizen and subjects, which the conventional or abstract idea of state fails to argue and through governmentality you can better uh, understand uh, how uh, power operates. Now, very briefly on this idea of bio power and biopolitics uh, that emerge out of uh, uh, this uh, conception of governmentality and it further developed by Thomas Lemke and many others. This biopolitics and biopower emerge with the governmentality and it is regarded as a mode of power which is exercised to manage or control the nature of demography in a state. It deals with the biological issue basically about birth, death, health that describes the nature of demography of the state. So, the idea of how to create a docile body which will be willing to obey without any resistance, without uh, the question. So, the state also tries to control, regulate the birth, deaths and health of the citizen. In uh, doing so, it exercises a power which uh, creates a new uh, population or uh, uh, new subjectivity which is uh, uh, something that is a kind of docile body willing to obey the uh, state or the institution of the state without much resistance. So, it shows the emergence of a state 
as a modern form of power and the role of the government as the agent of the state to address the issue of population, its needs, its increasing figures and factors to control and manage the growth of population and its activities. So, the political intervention of governmentality paves the way for biopolitics. It is referred to the specific interventions of the government into the species life or human beings in order to control births, deaths, reproduction, sexuality and to manage the growth of population in the state. So, this uh, governmentally focuses on this another aspect of power that intervenes into uh, the personal or private life of the people. So, this is something uh, very modern, very recent where the uh, personal or what is regarded as the intimate uh, sphere of individual life and there also uh, the power of a state uh, is pervasive, it is uh, uh, effective in terms of uh, making decisions about childbirth, death, uh, health and so on and so forth. Now, uh, the significance of uh, governmentality one lies with this idea that um, it helps us understand the functions of modern government or the process of governance much beyond the conventional idea of state and government to include those domains, those discourses which is often seen in the ordinary uh, uh, sense as non-political or apolitical and yet uh, uh, how power operates and functions uh, there. The second most crucial part of governmentality is that it is making the uh, governance most effective not by its coercive forces or uh, physical forces, but by producing a condition, creating a circumstances which in which individual may have the option or may feel that they are free to make decisions, but their decisions or choices are already always conditioned by the functioning of governmentality. So, Foucault emphasized that governmentality focuses not on governing with power over death, but power over life and that is very uh, crucial thing also that is uh, not about suppressing or uh, power over uh, death, but what individual do in his uh, life. So, for him power over life involved in two basic forms, these forms were not antithetical to each other, that is a kind of complementary to each other. However, they constituted rather two poles of development linked together by a whole intermediary cluster of relations. One of these centered on the body as a machine, its disciplinary to optimization of its capabilities, the extortion of its forces, the parallel increase of its usefulness and docility its integration into the system of efficient and economic controls, all this was ensured by procedures of power that characterize the disciplines, the anatomopolitics of human body. So, the effect, the significance of government lies in controlling or disciplining or the optimization of uh, the individual uh, capabilities and then using it for the uh, integration or inclusion in the system of governmental controls and uh, uh, which is eco economic and most regular. So, the uh, uh, approach for doing that is to target the body, the individual body and his or her personal capacities and then allowing that body or the individual uh, to have freedom and yet using that freedom for the advantage of the governmental uh, control or to ensuring the effectiveness of uh, government uh, function. So, governmentality as a concept allow you to understand some of uh, these uh, nuance or the minute ways through which uh, government or governing power operates in disciplining the body, even when it seems to give them the freedom to uh, exercise uh, his or her choice. So, now in summing up, we I have seen that uh, now, uh, this is very briefly uh, about uh, some arguments about the very existence of a state, very legitimacy of a state education. So, you have uh, many scholars 
unlike liberals who consider the state as evil but liberals consider a state as necessary evil so it is necessary for protection of individual life and property so therefore it obstructs human freedom yet uh, such obstruction can be tolerable if the state provides protection to individual life and liberty so in liberal philosophy you have a uh, state as a necessary evil so it's evil nonetheless it is necessary evil however many uh, uh, anarchist who questions the existence of a state argue that a state is not only evil but it is also unnecessary institution so they argue for creating a stateless society where there will be no state and uh, that society will be a self governing society of enlightened citizens so the anarchist tradition in political theory and philosophy questions the very existence of a state which is seen as limiting or curbing the human freedom and creativity and its existence is always coercive always problematic for the individual and his creativity and freedom so therefore they are arguing for creating a society which will be a stateless society of self governing enlightened citizen so that's a uh, argument very briefly about anarchist criticism to the uh, legitimacy or the existence of modern state with the globalization new challenges are posed uh, before the state so it is argued that globalization is a serious challenge to state and sovereignty and globalization uh, can be seen as a process which has multi dimensional aspects to it which may be economic with the growth of say multinational companies or transnational companies uh, and so on it may be the cultural and basically led by this uh, uh, information and communication technology uh, revolutions where it is easy to connect with the people across the world to uh, get the news across the world uh, in a uh, matter of second right so um, Uh, this multi-dimensional process, which we call globalization, has many uh, aspects or spheres that includes economic, cultural, and political dimensions of life. And we can uh, discuss it in much details. But we can understand the force of globalization that anything that is happening in other parts of the world immediately affects the a very distant part of the world. So, world is becoming increasingly interconnected. so in this ever increasing integration of societies people and economies and making of the global village which we call right we all are now living in a global village uh, so the distance and time and space in a sense is very much reduced by this information and communication technology so with this ever increasing integration of the society and making of global village the status of modern nation state and its sovereignty as we have discussed is also altered so institution like united nation world trade organization or supranational entity like asean european union transnational companies uh, or multinational companies severely affect the sovereignty of the state so state is willing to compromise to willing to uh, trade off with uh, uh, transnational bodies uh, such as political institutions like european union where the nation state is willing to come together to have one constitution one overarching uh, political authority one uh, currency and so on so this uh, severely affect the sovereignty of the state however a state is reaffirming its authority and becoming even more relevant and powerful institution and we must not assume that authority of the state precisely because of this uh, globalization or making of global village is waning in fact they are becoming even more stronger so modern state and government remains the most legitimate form of authority and its sovereignty continues to play a significant roles within the territory of the state as well as externally among the international community of nation state so why nation state is still relevant because within its territory a state uh, is seen as the supreme authority and outside its territory in the external community of nation state it is seen as the most authoritative and the legitimate voice of that people 
So, uh, there are talks and arguments about thinking beyond the nation state frames, but it is still that means the nation state frame still remains a very powerful frame to organize political life and understand the functioning of power in a given society. And therefore, the state and sovereignty remains a very strong, relevant and significant frame to understand the political organizations or the functioning of power in modern society. So, that is all on this uh, lecture today. You can refer to some of these texts to understand the uh, things that we have uh, discussed in this lecture today and to know more about this idea of governmentality and um, biopower and uh, biopolitics, you should refer to Thomas Lemke or uh, Michel Foucault governmentality will give you the more in-depth understanding of uh, the governmentality. So, that is all in today's lecture. Do let us know what you uh, think or uh, please write to us if you have any queries and dots will be very happy to respond within 24 hours. So, thanks for listening. Thank you all.